आ गया आ गया आ गया आ गया कुछ स्टूडेंट भेजा very good morning everyone how are you all everyone fine now last class we started in day 37 have you revised whatever we have done if you have any doubt you can ask me but there is one doubt come to in days introduction question number 9 in days introduction question number 9 question bank let us read the question fresh vegetable limited was incorporated on 2nd april 2001 under the provision of companies act 2013 to carry on whole, wholesale trading business in vegetable as per audited account of the financial year ended 31st march 2007 whenever they write down in this way 20x1 20x7 it means you need to Consider it as what relevant year. If you can't consider it 2001, you can say it is 2011. This is 2017. 2017. Correct now. Are you able to understand? In exam, so they will write down the exact year. Got this point? Approve it in its annual general meeting held on 31st August 2017. We can read its net worth. For the first time since incorporation exceeded 250 crore, so it exceeded 250 crore. Understood? The financial statement since inception till financial year ended 31st March 2006, we have prepared in accordance with companies accounting standard rules 2006. It has been advised that henceforth it should be prepared its financial statement. In accordance with the company's Indian Accounting Standard Rules 2015, so can you see from from 1st April 2017, the India's will be applicable because the net worth is 250 crore or more. Correct now. So from that phase, it is applicable to all listed company and unlisted company having a net worth of 250 or 250 crore. So first point is clear. The following additional information is provided by the company. FBL has a financial year 2002-2003. In the financial year 2002-2003, enter into a 60-40 partnership with a logistic limited and incorporated a partnership firm, Vegetable Logistic Associate, to carry on the logistic business of vegetable from farm to market. Now. Abhi right now we don't know the meaning of joint venture. We'll do the meaning of joint venture in India's Triple One. Now, what India's Triple One says that joint venture is an ar arrangement, contractual arrangement whereby two or more than two party carry on business under joint control. This is the meaning given under India's Triple One. Then they say that joint joint arrangement are of two types: joint operation and joint venture. So in days for this road road map, they have said joint venture, not joint operation. Means can you say this partnership firm can be a joint operation? It can be a joint venture. Now when it will be joint venture? When it will be joint operation? Detailed discussion will do where? In the respective in days. So I am till now we have not done a definition of any term. Correct now. So can you say in this way? If suppose partnership, this partnership firm is a joint operation, then so in days will not be applicable. But if it is a joint venture, because it is applicable to FBL, it will be also applicable to what this joint venture. That is only given in the answer. It might happen if you read the answer, you have a doubt about joint operation and joint venture. So, as per the India's rule, they have said what parent company, subsidiary company, associate, and joint venture. 
they have not mentioned joint operation so if indias is applicable to any company to their to their joint operation indias is not applicable to their joint venture indias is applicable understood this point so that is given in the question solution when you read it is quite possible you have a doubt about joint operation and joint venture so just write down refer indias triple one for the meaning of joint operation and joint venture we'll go to indias triple one triple one means 111 understood this point then they have said fbl also has an associate company correct now uh, the name is social welfare limited that was incorporated in july 2005 as a charitable organization and registered under section 8 of the company so can i say to an associate company it will be applicable if a company in india is applicable to, to, to their associate company is applicable even though it is a charitable organization irrespective of the fact is that it is a section 8 company so that is not a point which need to be considered so to all company whether it is any company if it is an associate company it will be applicable irrespective of the fact that it is a charitable organization understood this was the doubt which was asked to me correct any doubt whatever you are asking if i feel i will consider in the class got this point then one question is there question number seven abc incorporation incorporated in a foreign company country has a net worth of 700 crore it has two subsidiaries company x whose net worth is 600 crore and company y whose net worth is 150 crore company x and y would require to follow indias from the accounting period commencing on or after 1st april 2016 on the basis that their own net asset worth sorry their own net worth or on the basis of net worth of abc incorporation so what they must be there is one foreign company whose net worth is 700 crore exceed 500 crore so whether to foreign company india will be applicable whether to foreign company india will be applicable no to foreign company india is not applicable foreign company how india is applicable whether to foreign company this company's indian accounting standard rules will be applicable no no it will not be applicable so to foreign company this india's rules are not applicable under this point this one one mistake i think in the question they have said company x whose net worth as on 31st March 2014 is 600 crore correct now but in the answer they have given company X is having a net worth of 600 crore at the end of financial year 2015-16 so in the solution they have mentioned 15-16 correct now so this you can either correct the question or you can either, either correct the solution can, can I say we see previous three financial year even though you are writing 13 14 that will be considered 13 14 14 15 and 15 16 now so either you correct the question or you correct the solution so this is one typo mistake this is one typo mistake we should ignore it from examination point of view because in exam question it will be corrected understood correct means can i say x limited and y limited should be should for them india's will be applicable not on the basis of net worth of foreign company to them indias will be applicable on the basis of net worth of their own financial statement now this is the point so can you see if you consider net worth of their own financial statement to x to indias will be applicable to y indias will not be applicable understood this is the answer given you can read it understood got this point yes sir now let us come to indias 37 we have done indias 37 we have done the meaning of provision contingent liabilities and contingent asset once a brief revision the so provision means what provisions are liability of uncertain amount or timing liability means what present obligation arising from past event the settlement of which is expected to result in outflow of resource from the entity present obligation means obligation must be probable on a reporting date probable means chances are more than 50 percent we have understood obligation are of two type legal obligation and constructive obligation constructive obligation derived from entities own action it can be either from past practice and specific statement legal obligation arises due to contract or any other any other act correct 
Recognition, we have under the three condition. If all the three conditions satisfy, we need to recognize provision. There must be present obligation arising from past event. Outflow of resource which is required to settle the obligation must be probable. And a reliable estimation can be made for the amount of amount or timing of the obligation. We have also done that if the obligation is dependent on future conduct of business, then will not recognize as a provision. Means the obligation should be should exist independently from the entity's future conduct of business. Then only we can recognize provision. Correct. Legal obligation. We have done one important point that legal obligation arises only when legislation are either enacted. It is virtually certain by the end of reporting period it will be enacted. It will be shortly enacted. Understood? This point have you understood? Correct. Then contingent liability meaning we have done that contingent liabilities are present obligation arising from past event which cannot be recognized because either outflow of resource is not probable or reliable estimation cannot be made or they are possible obligation arising from past event. Of course, we will not recognize any contingent liability. It will be only disclosed in the financial statement. Contingent asset, we have done that they are possible asset arising from past, past event. Possible asset arising from past event. All the possible assets. However, if the inflows are virtually certain, then they are not contingent asset. They are asset to be recognized in the financial statement. If the inflows are probable, then it will be considered as contingent asset. It will not be recognized. It will be only disclosed in the notes to account. If the inflows are not probable, then no treatment are required. Then we started measurement of provision. So measurement we have understood it should be the best estimate of the expenditure which is required to settle the obligation at the end of reporting period. At the end of reporting period means can it should be discounted amount. Means the provision should be the present value of future expenditure. If the time value of money is material. If the time value of money is material. However, estimations should be determined based on the management judgment which should be supported either by experience of the past transaction or report of an expert or any additional evidence provided by the event occurring after reporting date. Correct? Means in simple word I will say estimation from examination point of will depend upon the information given in the question. Correct? From exam point of view. Means we are not supposed to fight for this point in from exam point of view. How to measure the whenever obligation involve large population will calculate expected value of obligation which is nothing but weighted average of all possible outcome. Outcome will be given only we need to apply weighted weight we can do that. However when the obligation means when there is a single obligation with two possible outcome then will take what most likely outcome then provision should be based on most likely outcome correct this much we have done. Then of course the discount rate should be pre-tax, gain from expected sale of assets should not be considered into account. Then we have done one special point about risk and uncertainties. I think this also you have understood that risk and uncertainties should, not, should be also considered for calculating the best amount of provision. However, risk adjustment can be done in three ways. In three ways, first either adding to the expected present value of future outflow or adjusting the estimate of future outflow or adjusting the discount rate reimbursement then we have done reimbursement the reimbursement whenever there is expenditure which is required to settle the obligation can be reimbursed correct yeah is expected to be reimbursed by any third party and that reimbursement is virtually certain then we recognize reimbursement as a separate asset in the balance sheet However, in SOPL, net amount will be shown as a expense. In any case, reimbursement assets should not exceed the amount of provision. However, if, if, if the reimbursement is not virtually certain, then we will not recognize it as a separate asset. However, if the reimbursement are probable, then it can be disclosed by way of notes to by way of notes. This much we have done. This much we have done. Any doubt? Any doubt? No doubt? So next point. Next point is future operating loss. You are not supposed to read anything till I read. Huh? Once you read the interest loss, then you will understand what is given. Huh? Then you will not apply your common sense. I always 
say that if you apply your common sense, all the answer you will have. Common sense as a chartered accountant, huh? common sense does not like a common people. You need to apply common sense of a chartered accountant. So whenever any questions are, think that you are a chartered accountant and give answer. 90% of your answer will be correct. So whenever in exam some case study based questions come, you need to, even though you forget the in days, your best answer will be correct answer. Whatever you feel, write down. Whatever you feel, write down. Either it will be correct or wrong. That they will decide now. You write down. Correct. And 90% of time, if you are writing as a chartered accountant, that will be correct. Understood? So, future operating losses. We are discussing about future operating losses. So, let me take one example. See, suppose I have a two business. Means one entity has a two factory. Let us say factory one, factory two. Quite possible. Now factory 1 is a profit making and factory 2 is a loss making. Loss making. Correct. Are you able to understand what I am saying? Current year financial statement it is a profit making, it is a loss making. Now because it is a loss making, management is expecting that in future, in future 2 year, in future 2 year, there will be an estimated loss of 100 crore. Management is expecting that in future there will be an expected loss of 2 crore and therefore we should discontinue it. Therefore we, we not right now, we should what? We should plan to discontinue it. The planning will take time. But what is the expectation? There will future, in future there is a loss of what? 100 crore. So should we recognize this as a provision in our balance sheet? It is an expected future loss. So should we recognize it as a provision? It is an expected future operating loss only? Yes or no? Now when I say ki, we, we have this, uh, can I say? When I am saying that we are planning to discontinue factory 2, it does not mean it will affect our going concern. Entity is a going concern only. Entity is a going concern. Huh? I am just giving clarification. Entity is a going concern. Because once entity becomes non-going concern, then India's will not be applicable. Then we need to do accounting as per some other aspect. That we will discuss in some other classes. Have you understood the question? Because should we create provision? Yes or no? First. Yes or no? No, no, no. Why? Why? No. Are why? It is based on future event, past event. Future event. This is the point, na? Where, where outflow will come? First condition only not satisfied. Present obligation arising from what? Past event. But it is based on future conduct of business. It is based on future business, and therefore it is outside the scope of this chapter only, na? is outside the scope of this chapter. The very simple point. Because in exam, they will not ask you this simple question. They will give you a case study, full story. They will start with one story and then they will end. So, it might happen you are emotionally affected with that. Correct now. I am just giving the crux of that case study. See, of course, in this example, it is a future operating loss which is not based on past event, which is based on what? Future event and therefore, in day 37 is not applicable. So, neither provision nor contingent liability as it is related to what? Future event. Understood? Correct. Let us come to the next point. Executory contract. Executory contract. Do you know about executory contract? You have done in contract act. What is the meaning of executory contract? Yeah. Either both the party have not performed their part of obligation or both the party has performed the obligation to some extent means partially. Both the party have performed their obligation partially. Either they have not performed or they have performed partially. That is known as executory contract. Means it is not yet executed. Simple word. Correct now. So that is known as executory contract. Let me take one example of executory contract. This is very important topic. Executory contract. Suppose a limited has done one contract with B limited to purchase 
टू परचेज अ प्लांट ए मशीनरी आफ्टर टू ईयर एट रुपीज टेन लैक अंडरस्टूड आर यू एबल टू अंडरस्टूड तो ए लिमिटेड हैज डन वन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विद बी लिमिटेड टू परचेज प्लांट ए मशीनरी आफ्टर टू ईयर एट रुपीज टेन लैक तो कैन यू सी द डिलीवरी विल बी रिसीव आफ्टर टू ईयर पेमेंट विल बी ऑल्सो मेड आफ्टर टू ईयर तो वेदर इट इज अदर इट इज एन एग्जीक्यूटरी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फर्स्ट मिनट टू अंडर वेदर इट इज एन एग्जीक्यूटरी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वेदर इट इज एन एग्जीक्यूटरी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट आई एम आस्किंग आई एम नॉट आस्किंग वेदर इंडिया थर्टी सेवन इज एप्लीकेबल नॉट फर्स्ट आई एम आस्किंग वेदर इट इज एन एग्जीक्यूटरी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वेदर बोथ द पार्टी हैव परफॉर्म देयर ऑब्लिगेशन नो बोथ द पार्टी हैज नॉट परफॉर्म देयर ऑब्लिगेशन Neither B Limited has delivered the plant machinery, nor A Limited has paid the amount. So it is an executory contract. So first we need to understand it is an executory contract. So can you see it is an executory contract? Correct. Now they have A Limited has done one contract to pay how much amount? So there is a contractual obligation. Should we recognize it as a liability? Should we recognize it as a liability? Yes or no? Should we recognize it as a liability? How many are saying yes? Anyone saying yes? Everyone saying no. We should not recognize it as a liability. Why? Why? One second future event. So can I say for executory contract also India thirty seven is not applicable. Executory contract India thirty seven is not applicable. Simple one. Correct. That is only given. Means can I say you now you don't require my help? Whether you require my help? I don't know. If you read this, you'll be you'll be able to understand or not. Correct now. If you have not given fees, don't give me fees. Correct. Correct now. You can understand everything by your own. But I am your support system. I am your support system. So consider me as only as you as your support system, as a guide, as a guide. But entire effort is your. You will pass examination because of your because of your effort, not because of my effort. not because of my effort so you need to put effort to pass the examination but you can understand anything you can understand any point so executory contract are the contract under which neither party has performed any of his obligation or both party have partially performed the obligation to an equal extent correct this standard does not apply to executory contract unless they are onerous unless they are onerous so now i need to explain you what is the onerous contract what is the meaning of onerous contract understood so next point is onerous contract let me change the example this example do you have understood now what happened after 6 month of the contract can you see when i say contract contract means binding this is a binding contract na binding contract means it is a non cancellable contract non cancellable contract can you say all contract which are enforceable in the eyes of law are non cancellable means when i am saying contract contract means it is enforceable in the eyes of law or not what is the meaning of contract which can be enforced bolna legally so can you say it is non cancellable contract what is the meaning of non cancellable contract non cancellable contract are those contract which can be cancelled but upon payment of penalty upon payment of penalty means any contract which can be cancelled without payment of penalty there are that are con cancellable contract understood means this contract can be cancelled but upon payment of penalty can i say any contract can be cancelled any contract can be cancelled right now we have done one contract we can cancel it i can cancel i will say i will not teach but i need to pay some compensation to you because it is a life exam na are you able to understand therefore i will never cancel are you able to understand what i am saying correct so non cancellable contract are those contract which can be cancelled upon payment of penalty now what happen after 6 month what happen ki a limited now does not require this machinery due to some reason suppose they change the production process they change the production process now it happen with me also what happen these all benches whatever you are right now observing na so it was just 
purchased before COVID-19. This benches just I purchased just before COVID-19. This contract was done, and then lockdown happened. Understood now? Lockdown happened. Means still now it was not delivered. Are you able to understand? So now to I know after COVID-19 it was COVID-19 for two years it was not required only. No face-to-face -face classes were there. Are you able to understand? So it happens with me also. Same thing. So same thing happened. Change in the production process. Change in the production process. And now machinery is not required. Now this machinery is not required. Understood? Are you able to understand? Now this A Limited has two options. Either they will purchase it and then sell it. Are you getting? Let us assume the scrap value. Scrap value of this machinery is nil. Let us assume. Let us assume. Huh? It can be one lakh rupees also. It can be sold at rupees one lakh. Okay, now suppose the first option is what they can purchase it, and now the machinery of is of no use, so they will sell it. Let us assume it cannot be sold in the market. It cannot be sold in the market. Got this point? Second option, they will cancel it. They will cancel the contract, but upon cancellation, they need to pay some penalty. And let us assume penalty is two lakh. Let us assume penalty is two lakh. Understood this point? So can you say in this case what happened? In this contract, the expected benefit from this contract is less than the cost of meeting this contract. Means the the cost of fulfilling the contract, cost of fulfilling the contract is more than what expected benefit from this contract. Yes or no? Means when you purchase this mess, there is no benefit only. The cost of fulfilling the contract is more than what. The expected benefit from the contract means whatever contract will do, can you say benefit from the contract will be higher than the cost? Means right now you have paid how much? Whatever fees you have paid, the benefit is more than that, na? And therefore you are taking the classes. Otherwise you will never take in the classes. So whenever we do the contract, the benefit is always more than the cost. But in this case, what happened? Ki the cost is more than what expected benefit, and therefore this contract now become what burden. This contract become burden. But na, and therefore it is known as onerous contract. It is known as onerous contract. Understood this point? So now India 37 says that once executory contract become onerous, now India 37 will be applicable. India 37 will be applicable, and the amount of provision will be equal to the unavoidable cost. Amount of provision will be equal to unavoidable cost, which will be lower of what? This and this, the lower means what is the cost of fulfilling the contract? 5 lakh minus nil, no benefit. So, 5 lakh or 2 lakh, whichever is lower. So, either they will they will execute the contract, they will purchase at rupees 5 lakh, or they will pay the penalty, whichever is lower. So, A or B, whichever lower, will be the amount of provision. Understood? Have you understood this point? Very simple. So what they want to see, let us read. See, an onerous contract is a contract. Is a contract. Which contract? Can I say executory contract? Because we are discussing about executory contract, na? So an onerous contract is an executory contract only. Got this point? In which unavoidable cost of meeting the obligation under the contract exceed the economic benefit expected to be received under it? So whenever unavoidable cost, unavoidable cost of meeting the obligation is more than expected benefit from that contract, it becomes onerous contract. Definition is very much clear. If the entity has a contract that is onerous, if the entity has a contract that is onerous, the present obligation under the contract shall be recognized and measured as a provision. The present obligation under the contract will be recognized as a provision. The cost of fulfilling a contract is I will read after some point. Let us come to the last point first. In this case, the amount of provision is equal to unavoidable cost. In this case, the amount of provision should be equal to unavoidable cost, which is lower of cost of fulfilling the obligation, cost of fulfilling the obligation, or any compensation or any penalty arising from failure to fulfill it. Failure to fulfill it means any penalty payable 
from yeah to exit from the contract to exit from the contract understood both will be given in the question you can find out very simple now only one doubt will come sir what is the meaning of cost of fulfilling the obligation what is the meaning of cost of fulfilling the obligation that is defined here sir the cost of fulfilling a contract comprise of cost that relate directly to the contract means only directly related cost we should take the those cost which are incurred which will be incurred only for fulfilling the contract means any cost which will be incurred even though you are not fulfilling the contract they are not cost of fulfilling the contract means there are some cost which will be incurred even though you are not fulfilling that contract that are not that should not be considered means only incremental cost should be con considered incremental cost means do the cost which will be incurred only for fulfilling that contract understood so that relate directly to the contract cost that relate directly to the contract consists of both the incremental cost of fulfilling that contract incremental cost incremental cost means which are Yeah, which will not be incurred. I don't this one. Which will not be incurred. If the contract, if the contract is not fulfilled, understood this point? Which will not be incurred if the contract is not fulfilled. Understood this point? Correct. For example, direct labor, direct material, etc. And an allocation of directly attributable cost or directly attributable cost means production overhead. We can say. Which are specifically incurred for this contract only. This indirect material, indirect labor, indirect cost can be also considered. For example, the depreciation of an item of PP used in fulfilling that contract, among others, the depreciation which are used for that contract. Sorry, the PP which are used for that contract, depreciation of that asset should be also considered. So, an allocation of directly attributable cost. Correct. Understood. Means we can see the. Cost which are unavoidable, unavoidable cost. The key word is what unavoidable cost of meeting the obligation under the contract are only those costs that are incremental to the performance of the contract. Incremental, you understood. Do not include allocated cost that will be incurred regardless of whether the entity fulfilled the contract or not. Means it will not include those costs which will be incurred even the contract is not fulfilled. We should ignore that and cannot be avoided by the entity's future action. Cannot be avoided by the entity's future action. Understood? Correct. So this become important for writing in exam. This become what on the response right. In simple word, I will say from exam point of view, that whenever contract whenever a contract become on the rest, we need to recognize. It has a provision which will be lower of these two. We lower of these two means what? Cost of fulfilling the obligation or any compensation or penalty payable on failure to fulfill it. Got this point? Let me take some questions. Very simple, simple question given means that all questions are not required to be read by me. You can also read by your own, but only for your understanding purpose. I am taking some questions. Question twelve. X Metal Limited has entered into a non-cancellable contract with Y Limited to purchase ten thousand units. Of raw material at rupees fifty per unit at a contract price of five lakh. So five lakh is the contract price. As per terms of contract, 
X Metal Limited would have to pay sixty thousand to exit the said contract. This is penalty. X Metal Limited has discontinued manufacturing the product that would use the said raw material. Now they have discontinued the operation only. For that purpose, X Metal Limited has identified a third party to whom it can sell the said raw material at rupees forty-five per unit. Means it can be sold at rupees forty-five per unit. How should X Limited account for the transaction in the books of account in respect of the above contract? So, whether it is an executive contract, yes. First, you define what executive contract. Then, say it is an onerous contract. So, in there, thirty-seven will be applicable to onerous contract, which will the amount of provision will be equal to what? Lower of point number A is what? Cost of fulfilling. The so cost of fulfilling is what? Five lakh minus four lakh fifty thousand. Because we will recover four lakh fifty thousand to fifty thousand, or penalty. Penalty is what? Sixty thousand, whichever is lower. So you need to create a provision of what? Fifty thousand. So you need to create a provision of fifty thousand. Understood? Super easy question. Yes, this type of questions are super easy, na? And therefore, they will not ask this type of question. Correct? Don't expect this type of question. This can be asked also. Now with MCQ form. MCQ type of question, this type of question are very can be asked for one mark question. Very good question. So one question was asked in exam. The similar example I have taken this question. Similar example I have already taken that they purchase what one machine. So this you can read. Okay, whatever question I am doing now, just give circle. Or what you can do in front of this concept right down. I have done which question? Question number first question. Is what was the question number? Hi, twelve. First, I have done question number two. Write down you also question number twelve. Then I am doing question number twenty-eight. Write down or keep circle and write down here onerous contract in front of the question onerous contract the topic. So you will understand these questions we have done in the class. Balance question you are supposed to read by your own. So all the questions I will not read now. Then what you will do? If I have read all the questions, correct now. So this question, this example already I have taken in class, correct now. This you can read by your own now. You will be able to understand. Now, one good question was asked, was given. I mean, this is actually one illustrative question. Let me read first because it is a very big question. Let me read. Very simple, but HBCL manufacture heavy equipment for construction industry. An order for supply of ninety equipment was received for ABIR. How many equipment? Ninety. The unit price of the equipment was agreed at one ninety lakh each. One ninety lakh each. Sixty four equipment was supplied during the year two thousand one two thousand two. So how much already supplied? Means this is partially done. Means this is a contract which is partially performed. Then also executory only, na? So out of ninety, how much supplied? How much balance left? Twenty six, twenty six, and the balance quantity remaining to be supplied as on thirty first March two thousand two. HBCL has five equipment in the inventory. Means out of this twenty six, how much is already in the inventory? Means how much we need to produce? Twenty one we need to produce. Are we able to understand what I am saying? HBCL consider that contract was onerous. Thank you very much. It is given in the question. It is an onerous contract. Therefore, the NRV of the inventory has been taken as value of inventory as on thirty first March two thousand two. This is to India's to. Of course, we will take cost price or NRV whichever is lower. So it is quite possible NRV is lower than what cost price, and therefore they have taken NRV. Are we able to understand? Yes, sir. The management of HBCL contend that cost incurred to our admin overhead, finance charges, and research and development expenses, sales overhead, head quarter expenditure are considered as a pre-aid cost and has not considered for creation of provision. Correct only because can I say these are not incremental cost? These are pre-aid cost. Pre-aid cost means it will be incurred even though we do not produce these equipment. This all na. Admin expense, finance charges, research and development expenses. This will be incurred even though you are not fulfilling the contract. So management is correct only. Management is correct. 
and the same have not been included in the computation of unavoidable calls. Thank you very much. This, this question is what has been designed from student point of view to understand which topic on the contract. Understood? The management of HBCN has submitted the details of cost that have been considered for the creation of provision towards onerous contract. So they have given some detail of cost which has been considered for creation of provision. Material cost, of course it will be included. Correct. Labor cost, it will be also included. And material overhead, this will be also included. This will be also included. You can read whatever is given. Accordingly, the provision has been considered. Provision has been made considering the above cost only. The value of provision created for 21. Dekho, 21 only. 21 na? 26 minus 5. Remaining equipment to be produced is as per the working shown below. So the cost of production which include material cost, labor cost, material overhead is 199. Selling price is 190. Means what is the cost of fulfilling the contract? 9. Therefore, 9 into 21, 189. So, 189 become 189 lakhs. This is 189 lakhs. So, we should create a provision of what? 189 lakhs. They have not given any information about penalty. Means the, it is quite possible they cannot cancel the contract. They cannot cancel the contract. Therefore, there is no penalty while up point. Correct now. Whether the company's accounting treatment for the cost of creation of provision towards onerous contract is in line with the provision of India Studies. Now they ask whether it is correct. So it means you will write on entire para whatever is given in their assurance book. Now you can write yes, it is in line. You will get marks. So it means you should write down from here to here all the point executory contract, onerous contract, then all these points, then at the end this point, then explain yes, it is in line with India 37. Therefore, okay. Correct. So can you see it was an illustrative question? illustrative but this type of question are dangerous because in this you need to write down properly whenever a CA student need to write now they can't write properly they can solve it but writing is very weak because I am a CA na? we all we all are bad in what writing we are very good in what convincing other we are very good in convincing other but writing not good we are not we do always copy paste previous year financial year current year copy paste na? whether we we write anything, we don't write anything. We are not good in writing. So writing you need to build. How to write in exam? That is important. Understood. Now you can read it. Same thing is given. Chalega. So onerous contract also you have understood. Chalega. Yes, sir. Correct. Now let us come to some small small point changes in provision. Can you say whatever provision you have created in one reporting date? Next reporting date, it requires reassessment. Can you say amount of provision might change because the circumstances, condition has been changed? Therefore, the amount of provisions will be reassessed as per the current best estimate, as per the current best estimate, and therefore it might be increased or it might be decreased. It is quite possible that now provision is no longer required. Because present obligation might become possible obligation, a possible obligation might become remote obligation. Quite possible now. Nah? It is quite possible provision is no longer required. You need to reverse the amount of provision. It means every year we need to do reassessment of the provision till it is actually settled. Till it is actually settled. The provision must be reviewed at each reporting date and adjusted to reflect the best current estimate. If the provision is no longer required, as it is not probable, amount of provision must be reversed. And that's it. Correct. Now, next point. Try to understand. I said, suppose this is the reporting date, and this is the amount payable after three years. So we'll find out present value. Present value. Present value you can calculate suppose 10 lakh. What is the 10% present value factor? 0 0.751 na? 10% 0 0.751. You know how to calculate? Calculator should be with you. 0 0.751 it is coming. So you can find out 7 lakh 51,000. 
means on this date what journal entry you have done pl account debit to provision na pl account debit to provision 7 lakh 51000 but after 3 year how much you will pay 10 lakh so the difference is what and uh, difference should be considered as what amount i am not asking amount so you can calculate so this difference 10 lakh minus 7 lakh 51000 this will be considered as what means whenever you discount so the difference between future value and present value is what interest element this is the interest element now so what india 37 says that you need to unwind the amount of provision to measure the carrying amount at each reporting date means can you see you need to add interest element every year add interest element now so if you will now compound it by interest then only it will become 10, 10 lakh so this this amount is known as borrowing cost and it will be charged to pl as an expense it will be charged to pl as an expense this process is known as unwinding of the amount of provision unwinding a new term in your life till now we say either discounting or compounding discounting means deduct interest compounding means add interest discounting means what deduct interest compounding means what add interest normally we say compounding but in days 37 has given a new term unwinding of provisional amount unwinding means add interest unwinding means add interest so when discounting is used the carrying amount of provision increases every year carrying amount of provision increases every year the increase amount is treated as borrowing cost borrowing cost means interest cost borrowing cost means interest cost and it will be charged to pl as a expense understood have you understood yes sir so, take one example let us take one question question 10 x telecom limited has an income tax litigation pending before appellate authority Legal advisor opinion is that X Telecom Limited will lose the case and the estimated liability is 1 crore may arise in 2 years. The liability is recognized on a discounted basis. The discount rate at which liability has been discounted is 10% and, and it is assumed that discount rate does not change over the period of 2 years. How should X Limited calculate the amount of borrowing cost? So they have asked you to calculate the amount of borrowing cost. It means what will do? So we are doing question number 10. So this is y0, this is y1, and this is y2. This amount is what? 1 crore. But we want to recognize provision as on this date. So this will be 1 crore multiplied by how much 0 0.826 so this will be 82 lakh 60,000 so are you able to understand what I am saying correct so at year and one they have not given the date now they have not given date let us assume only for understanding let us assume this is 31st March 2023 this I have assumed huh? for passing journal entry suppose they have asked journal entry so 31st March 2023 what journal entry will do profit and loss account debit to provision for they have asked tax na income tax na is income tax question na income tax litigation so provision for income tax you can add on how much 82 lakh 60,000 then next year 31st March 2024 you recognize borrowing cost borrowing cost na? transfer to PL account debit to what provision for income tax you will add 10% interest 10% interest will be how much 8,26,000 8,26,000 then 31st March 2025 once again we will do borrowing cost 
profit and loss account debit to what provision for what income tax okay last year always interest should be calculated as a balancing figure i think you have also done the same thing in your ca enter fm also so last year due to approximation we should calculate by interest as a balancing figure so it should be 1 lakh provision amount should be 1 lakh this plus this is how much so we will do 1 crore minus how much how much as you have calculated 9 lakh 14000 9 lakh 14000 understood correct na means this is as how much 9 lakh 90 lakh 86000 so this is the general entry so this is the amount of borrowing cost this is the amount of borrowing cost simple simple any doubt correct now but if we read the answer now in answer what they have given check karenge what they have done actually in answer means you can understand the answer but when you will match with my solution it will not match in answer what they have done they have calculated present value factor at this date also so this become 0.909 so this amount is coming 90 lakh 90000 so this difference is how much this difference is coming how much 90 lakh 90000 minus 82 lakh 60000 how much 8 lakh 30000 this become interest of first year now 1 crore minus 90 lakh 90000 how much 9 lakh 10000 so this become interest of second year so in solution they have done in this way but that that solution is also correct this solution is also correct can is whenever we use discounting factor there will be some approximation about the decimal and because of that reason answer of student might different means one student answer cannot match with other student answer so both are correct so don't be unhappy because of this reason ha huh? both answers are correct chalega yes sir so this is known as unwinding of provision okay sir correct yes right on question number which question we have done then next point is use of provision use of provision now the question is that if suppose the provision is no longer required if the provision is no longer required suppose we created provision in question number 10 and after some time we felt that it is no longer required so can we use that amount of provision for some other purpose can we use that amount of provision for some other other contingencies no we cannot use that amount of provision for for some other contingencies it need to be always reverse it need to be always reverse so if no longer required reverse it you cannot use that amount of provision for some other purpose clarification has been given understood point but correct the provision should be used only for the expenditure for which it was originally recognized in other words it cannot be used for any other purpose if no longer required reverse it got this point no accounting treatment the accounting treatment of bachpan se you are doing if related to expense means if you are creating provision for expected expense expected expense then what general entry expense account debit to provision and then provision account debit for reverse of what general entry provision account debit to expense so for creation expense account debit to provision for reversal provision account debit to expense but sometime what happen whatever provision you are creating that is related to the acquisition or construction of asset that is related to acquisition and construction of asset then can it say it should be capitalized with the cost price of asset if it is related to acquisition and construction of asset then it should be capitalized with the cost price of asset then general entry will work asset account debit to provision and on reversal provision account debit to asset understood have you understood can you see this to you have done before also can you give me any example of this related to asset can you give me some example of this related to asset have you understood what i am asking ki this to you have understood related to expense this you have understood can you give me some example related to the acquisition and construction of asset 
very good it means you have done as 10 excellent excellent dismantling cost but i think everyone have not understood understood dismantling cost if you have done as 10 then it means you know about this you just write down refer i will teach you this point in india 16 in detail that time we will discuss about dismantling cost that time we will discuss about dismantling cost very good means already i am convinced with him means he knows so i am not i will not discuss because that point i will discuss under in day 16 coming soon in your life just write on refer in day 16 only one example is there only one example is there that you have already said so i don't have any scope to teach now correct now so we refer what in day 16 Chalo. this also done now the last point of this chapter is restructuring i think there are four special points one we have done reimbursement that is expected then future operating loss that is good point but question may or may not come then we have done onerous contract expected then restructuring expected so normally from these three topics reimbursement onerous contract restructuring we expect question at ca final level we expect question at ca final level restructuring what do you mean by restructuring restructure can you say amalgamation whatever you have done in ca inter is also an example of restructuring restructuring means what he any program yeah, any action of the entity which will change the scope of business which will materially change the scope of business if suddenly you will do some activity which will change the entire scope of business for example if i shift my business location from here to another place it will change the scope of business correct now so any activity or any program which will change materially the scope of business that is known as what restructuring but without entering into liquidation means with restructuring going concern is not inappropriate going concern will remain valid means we are not seeing liquidation of entity entity will remain going concern only so therefore going concern gc means what going concern write down full only going concern will not be affected correct so it is a program which materially changes the scope of business for example sale of a division the sale of one component of the entity sale of one business of the entity not entire business sale of one business for example i decided to close down my ca foundation business it means we are going concern but we do not want to continue ca foundation correct Termination of a division. We, term, we want to terminate one component or closing of a business location or relocation to some other location. And so these are some examples of what? Restructuring. These are some examples of restructuring. Now the question is that suppose you decided to restructure. We suppose let us me take one example. Okay, suppose we decided to close down one business, one factory. Correct. So can you say because of that closure, we need to incur some cost of a restructuring. The cost will be actually incurred on actual closure. But right now we have decided. But actual closure will take will be done immediately or after some time. Means of course it may take two years to actually close down. Because we may have some contract we need to first fulfill now. Are we able to understand what I am saying? So it might take two years for actual closure. We have decided right now, but closure will take after two years. And whenever there is an actual closure, there will be some cost of restructuring. For example, whatever employee who will be terminated because you close down the factory, you need to pay compensation to them. You need to pay compensation to that compensation to employee is directly related to restructuring. Because of restructuring, you need to pay some compensation. Now the question arises, when you have decided whether any obligation arises, and if obligation arises, should we create provision? There are two questions. Have you understood this point? So the point is that suppose this is the date when you have decided. Correct. This is the date 
when you have decided to close down but actual closure let us assume it will take after two year let us assume so cost restructuring cost will be actually incurred at this point of time should we apply india's 37 on this date and should we create provision for restructuring cost on this date have you understood the topic topic have you understood first topic we are discussing what very important topic restructuring correct so my question to you all once i have decided to close down should we create any provision for restructuring what do you think no why future conduct of business you are saying future so then so everything is future only if you are saying just try to understand this is based on future event but it is not dependent on future conduct of business we have already decided now we have already decided means just try to understand if you are saying it is based on future event so there are two things obligation arises from past event which is dependent on happening or non happening of uncertain future event so i am saying whether obligation arises first you think whether obligation arises from past event yes you have decided i don't know we right now i have not given any answer you are saying it is based on future event so i say it is of course can i say the obligation will be settled based on uncertain future event i mean right now we don't know this point this why i say expected let us assume but on this date this is uncertain na are you able to understand what i am saying but you have decided you have decided should we create provision should we create provision are you able to let me give an example let me give an example suppose i decided to marry one girl i propose a girl so should i record all future expenditure of marriage why not ha uh, can i say i have proposed till now no confirmation received means can i say till now no commitment no commitment na so what india study 7 says that first find out whether entity is committed to this proposal it is only a proposal right now you have decided it does not it become what commitment there is no commitment right now so what india study 7 says that just point just find out a point of time when entity become committed to this once entity become committed then india study 7 is applicable india study 7 is applicable and at this point of time you need to recognize what provision understood correct so how we will understand that entity is committed so india study 7 has given two condition a or b if any one condition satisfied sorry my mistake a and b if both the conditions are satisfied then it means entity is committed if both the condition are satisfied it means entity is committed just try to understand everyone we i propose a girl understood and acceptance received i can give this type of example now ha huh? correct i am married ha i will not propose anyone now i am legally committed now so i propose a girl and commitment and suppose confirmation received and i have made announcement in facebook that from single i become mingle can i say announcement means what i am committed otherwise so i will never announce yes or no so can i say once i announce it means i am committed otherwise so i will never announce correct because i can propose another another girl also na but once i announce can i propose anyone no it means can i say once i announce it gives an indication that you are committed it gives a indication that you not i am committed are you able to understand so what india study seven says that if the entity has made a detailed detailed plan for restructuring correct 
and either implemented either implemented such plan or has made announcement of such plan has made an announcement of such plan it means they are committed and there is a constructive obligation and therefore we should recognize what provision so if these two conditions satisfied so it gives an indication that yes there is a constructive obligation and because of that constructive obligation we should recognize provision understood have you understood so entity has made a detailed formal plan and entity has impl either implemented such plan has done some activity to implement such plan or has made announcement of such plan to the person who are affected by it. understood correct have you understood so what they want to so let us read a provision for restructuring cost is required when recognition criteria of provisions are satisfied recognition criteria is that three conditions there must be present obligation arising from past event outflow of resource must be probable and amount can be estimated a constructive obligation for restructuring arises when entity has a detailed formal plan for restructuring entity has a detailed formal plan can you see when you will do detailed plan when you are committed otherwise we will never do detailed plan detailed plan are you getting so when you are committed then only you will go for detailed plan otherwise you will not go for detailed plan correct and and entity has started to implement such plan for example we have given one advertisement in the newspaper that we want to sell our business so can i say it is a indication that you have started one activity to implement such plan implement so it shows your commitment it shows your commitment or announce the main features of restructuring plan to those affected by it means you have called all the members of your uh, company and you have announced it to the shareholder to the creditor to the employee that we have decided to discontinue this business it means you have committed to that plan correct so this too is very very important from exam point of view understood so once these two conditions satisfied india 37 applicable and you can create a provision now how to what will be the amount of provision measurement of provision same thing a restructuring provision should include only the direct expenditure arising from restructuring direct expenditure arising from restructuring means one second incremental cost one second incremental cost which are those that are both necessary entailed by the restructuring means which is only because of restructuring which is only because of restructuring and not associated with ongoing activities of the entity means it should not include any expenditure which is related to ongoing activities of the entity correct means it will not include admin expense etc means simple word expenditure yeah expenses which will be incurred yeah which are avoidable which you can avoid which you can't avoid even though restructuring was not done that will not be considered are you able to understand See, this happens only because of restructuring so any expenses which are related to ongoing activities of the entity should not be considered a restructuring provision does not include costs such as retraining or relocating continuing staff relocation cost retraining cost that will not be considered marketing cost that will not be considered investment in new system and distribution network why because okay, these are related to the future conduct of business these are related to future conduct of business so this expenditure relate to the future conduct of business and therefore should not be considered therefore should not be considered correct future operating loss up to the date of restructuring future operating loss up to the date of restructuring are not included in provision unless they, re they relate to what onerous contract unless they relate to onerous contract all points we have understood correct 
let me take one good question based on this come to question number यूलिमिटेड इज अ लार्ज कॉन्ग्रोमरेट विद अ नंबर ऑफ सब्सिडियरीज इट इज प्रिपेयरिंग कॉन्सोलिडेटेड फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट एस ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च टू थाउजेंड एटीन एज पर द नोटिफाइड इंडिया कैन यू सी ऑल इंडिया विल बी एप्लीकेबल टू कॉन्सोलिडेटेड एज वेल एज सेपरेट फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट करेक्ट तो मैंने ऐसे कॉन्सोलिडेटेड तो कॉन्सोलिडेटेड फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट इज द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट ऑफ ग्रुप एंटिटी तो टू इंटायर ग्रुप एंटिटी ऑल द इंडिया विल बी एप्लीकेबल गॉट इज फाइन द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट आर ड्यू टू बी ऑथोराइज फॉर इशू ऑन फिफ्टीन मे मी दिस इज द डेट ऑफ अप्रूवल तो वन सेकेंड दिस इज लिंक विद इंडिया टेन ए एस फोर कमिंग सून बट यू नो ए एस फोर it is taking your assistance for some transaction that have taken place in some of its subsidiaries during the year g limited is a wholly owned subsidiary of u limited engaged in the management consultancy services on 31st jan 2018 means during the year the board of directors of u limited decided to discontinue decided abhi only decided to discontinue the business of g limited from 30th april 2018 they made a public announcement of their decision on 15 feb 2018 before 31st march constructive obligation arises on 31st march or not yes and therefore india's 37 will be applicable under this point g limited does not have many assets or liability it is estimated that outstanding trade receivable and payable would be settled by 31st may 2018 you limited collect any amount Still owed by G Limited customer after 31st May 2018, they have offered the employee of G Limited termination payment or alternative employment opportunity. Can the collection of data, a payment to creditor, is related to ongoing activities? So any amount which is less collected or more paid should not be considered because that is related to what ongoing activities. So this para is related to ongoing. Activities, therefore, should not be considered. Now, to employ of G Limited, they have given two options: either termination option or alternative employment opportunities. Either you go out of the company or take some alternative job. Following are the some of the details relating to G Limited. On the date of public announcement, on the date of public announcement means 15 Feb 2018. It is estimated by G Limited that it would have to pay 540 lakh as termination payment to the employee, and the cost for relocation of employee would remain, who would remain within the group would be 60 lakh. Miss what they want to say? Let me draw. So we are doing question number 17, and this is 31st March 2018, na? And this is 15th Feb 2018. So termination cost and relocation cost. Termination cost how much given? Five, five forty, five forty lakh. And this sixty lakh. Relocation cost? Yes, sir. Then what do we give? The actual termination payment totaling rupees five forty lakh were made on fifteen May two thousand eighteen. As per the latest estimate made by 15 May 2018, the total relocation cost will be 63 lakh. But on 15 May, what happened? 15th May. Actual cost is what five twenty, and estimated relocation cost is how much? 63. 15 May is the date of approval. 15 May is the date of approval, na? It is given 15 May 2018 is the date of approval. G Limited has taken a property on operating lease, which are which was expiring on 31st March 2022. The present value of future lease rental, using an appropriate discount rate, is 430 lakh. 
and on 15 may 2018 g limited made a payment to the lesser of 410 lakh in return for the early termination of lease but now this point is actually not relevant is that all not relevant due to in days 116 means this question was created before introduction of in days 116 this question was created before introduction of in days 116 and is what i am saying before in days 116 there was one in days in days 17 which is now deleted in days 17 was same to same as 19 whatever you have done as 19 if you remember thoda sa i can say as 19 is to say so as i am just giving thoda sa hint because this point is will be relevant in every chapter as per as 19 if you remember we will do accounting in the books of lessee and lesser you remember lessee lesser remember as 19 na then only i will teach otherwise i will defer it correct na so as 19 is to say you need to do accounting in the books of lessee and lesser and for accounting it may it can be operating lease or finance lease it can be operating lease or finance lease this was the case now what is operating lease what is finance lease if you know very good if you don't know then also very good okay understood now in days 116 what they say ki in the books of lessee in the books of lesser in the books of lesser so they can be operating lease or finance lease means it is same to same i will say 90% same as as 90 but in the books of lessee now there is no concept of operating lease or finance lease there is no concept of operating lease or finance lease understood so all lease means only lease correct na it cannot be operating it cannot be finance in the books of lessee and what in days 116 say that whatever lease is there we need to create we need to recognize one rou asset to lease liability we need to recognize one rou asset and lease liability correct means whatever asset has been received on lease that will be known as rou asset rou asset means right of use asset right of use asset so the right will be recognized as an asset why detailed discussion will be done under in days 116 So can you see in the books of lessee now there is no concept of operating lease or finance lease means already we have recognized one liability if you have already recognized liability then again so you will not recognize the liability na are bolna rahe and therefore this point is not valid and therefore i will say this point is not valid so ignore this correct but what happened recently in one rtp they have given same to same question means batao kya kare This question was created before in days one one six, so they should change it, na? अरे बोल ना रे. Now what happened? If I will change or if I will delete this point from my question bank, and now this question comes in exam, you will suffer. So what I am saying, it is not relevant due to in days one one six. From my point of view, it will not come in exam. If come, to be smart to answer. You should be smart enough to answer it. You should be smart enough to answer it. Correct now. So now for this point, I will say in days thirty-seven is not applicable. देखो देखो. G Limited has taken property on operating lease. This is not possible only. G Limited is a lessee, and in the books of lessee, there is no operating lease concept. So this point become invalid, na? Are you getting? So when these questions come, what you write down? See, for G Limited, it cannot be operating lease. Please check the question first. Don't write in this way. Just write down this point. For this point, will not create any provision. Only ignore this point. ठीक है ना? So I am not deleting this point. Intensely, I am not deleted. Understand why I am not deleted? Because same to same question might come. ठीक है? Then loss after tax of G Limited for the year ended 31st March 2018 is 400 lakh. मतलब कि up to 31st March 2018, what was the loss? Up to this, what is the loss? Brother, what you will do about this? What you will do about this loss? 
whether for this loss india 37 applicable this is the loss of current year na whether for this loss india 37 applicable this will be recognized india 37 will not be applicable now so this is bakwas point one second to confuse you correct one second again G Limited made a future operating loss totaling rupees 60 lakh till 38 April 2018. 38 April was the actual closer date. So 38 April was the actual closer date. So this becomes loss from this date to this date is how much 60 lakh. What you will do about this? Should we recognize the provision for this? So for future operating loss, no provision. For future operating loss, no provision unless the contract is on the rest so they have not given anything about on the rest how how should you limited present a decision to discontinue the business in his consolidated statement of comprehensive income in consolidated statement of comprehensive income this is nothing but a statement of pl this question has taken from which book international book they don't have time to change the question also so this is nothing but sopl huh? What are the provisions that a company is required to make as per India 37? I will say good quality of question. This is a good quality from CA final point. Easy. Solution is very easy. But question is very good. Normally what happens, we don't understand what they are asking in exam. Because in exam, in your mind, India 37 is not there. Entire FR is revolving. Now to first you need to go to India 37 and then right now, then this question becomes interesting. So now the very easy without. Should we create a provision for termination compensation? Should we create a provision for termination compensation? They have already gave, given that announcement has been done. So there is a constructive obligation. Should we create a provision for termination compensation? Yes or no? Yes. What about 540 lakh? 520 lakh? 520. Why? Because can I say this was known before? Approval of financial statement. The best estimate is 520 lakh, not 540 lakh. Very good. So 520 lakh is correct. If you are not able to understand why 520 lakh, next chapter is India's 10 only. We'll discuss in detail about 520 lakh. Chalega? Okay. Now, should we create any con a provision for relocation cost? No. Very good. Excellent. Miss. Excellent. Depends upon what future conduct of business, whether employee will relocate or not. It depends upon future conduct of business. Therefore, no provision is required. For this also, no provision required. It means the amount of provision will be only 520 lakh. So, we will change the answer also. Because in the answer now, they have given this point you delete. Not relevant now. Not relevant now. And you just delete this 410 lakh. So, your answer will be 520 lakh. Understood. Restructuring also done. Correct. You are question number 17. Can I don't refer question number 17. So chapter over. Scope is left. Scope is what? What do you mean by scope? See what is covered, what is not covered in this chapter. Normally this is the first point of any India, but I do at the end. Because initially you can't understand this now. Now you can understand each and every point. See what is not covered, that is given the scope. So India 37 is not applicable to executory contract unless on the rest. Now you have understood this. It is not applicable to executory contract unless on the rest. Financial instrument. Financial instrument means what? You can add on debtor, investment, etc. or what? Financial asset. So can you, for them, is any reduction in the value of asset is not covered in this chapter because they are not liability. So any allowance of bad and doubtful debt is not covered in this chapter. That is covered in separate chapter coming soon in day 109. Income tax. Income tax is totally covered in a specific in day 12. Therefore it is outside the scope of what? In day 37. Means if any provision is covered under some other in day So of course in day 37 is not applicable. Correct. Employee benefit. Provision for employee benefit is covered under India's 19 specifically. So, will be outside the scope of this chapter. Means that will meet a definition of provision but cover there. It is not covered in this chapter. Insurance contract. Insurance contract means if suppose any company is doing insurance business. So, they need to pay claims. 
So for that, whether provision is required or not, that is covered under NDS 104. But good point is that this is not in a syllabus. This chapter is not in syllabus. NDS 104 is not in our syllabus. Why? Because NDS 117 is coming soon. NDS 117 is in under drafting stage that is related to insurance company. Once NDS 117 will come, then NDS will be applicable to insurance company and then that will be part of your syllabus. So become CA as soon as possible. Otherwise that will be also applicable to your insurance company. Okay? Then last point, contingent consideration arising in case of business combination. Whatever we do in business combination that is covered under NDS 103. So it is outside the scope of this chapter. Now this might be important for MCQs. Previously I say Pallo, because they will not ask theory question na. Now it become important. Now each point become important. Got this point? Disclosure. Disclosure for each class of provision. A brief description of the nature of obligation. Write down the nature of obligation. An indication of uncertainties about the amount or timing of those outflow. So just give a indication of uncertainties. The amount of any expected reimbursement. Any reimbursement is there that you should disclose. Ki what is the amount of expected reimbursement? Stating the amount of any asset that has been recognized for that expected reimbursement. If you have recognized that asset, write down how much asset you have recognized. For each class of contingent liability, a brief description is required. Whether practicable, sorry, where practicable, an estimate of its financial effect means it can be estimated. It may not be estimated. If estimated, write down the amount of estimation. An indication of uncertainties relating to the amount or timing of an outflow. Here also if there is any indication of uncertainty, that also is mentioned. The possibility of any reimbursement. If there is any possibility of reimbursement, that also you mention. For each class of contingent asset, a brief description is required. An estimate of their financial effect wherever practicable. Means if it is practicable to estimate, then only disclose. If impracticable to estimate, then only disclose the fact. So where any of the above information is not disclosed because it is not practicable to do so, the fact should be stated that we are not able to estimate the amount. We are not able to estimate the amount. Then chapter over. Difference between India's 37 and AS 29. I don't know whether it is relevant for exam or not. Okay. Rare chances. I will say very rare chances. Means it is remote chances that they will create a question from this. So read it. Correct now. It will not take much time. Four points are there. So constructive obligation. India's 37 deals. Already I have informed you. But AS 29 was silent. Discount allowed when time value of money is met here, but this is not permitted under AS 29. But only there is one exception where present value can be done. You know, AS 29 has given one exception when present value is required. Only one exception, only one circumstance. Do you know this? You don't know. So, I will teach you this point in India's one one sorry, India's 16 only. I will give you this point in India 16 Q. AS 29 has given an exception where discounting is allowed. Contingent asset required disclosure in financial statement but AS 29 says that disclosed in the report of approving authority. Already I have informed you. Onerous contract. What AS India 37 says that it requires recognition of impairment loss on the asset. Now impairment loss will be covered under India's 36 coming soon. Now suppose there is an onerous contract and there is one asset which is dedicated for that contract and for that asset India's 36 is applicable. So what India's 37 says that first calculate impairment loss as per India's 36 then calculate what provision. So first you need to calculate impairment loss as per India's 36 and for the balance amount you should create what provision. Correct. So it requires recognition of impairment loss on the asset dedicated to such contract before any provision is created as per India's 37. So before creating any provision apply India's 36. Correct. But because you don't know India's 36 therefore we are not discussing right now. Automatically you will understand this point when we will do India's 
that is this para is totally silent in as 29 done chapter over chapter over now can i say can you do the balance question by your own i will take some question come to question 20 mariko has an obligation to restore environmental damage in the area surrounding his factory i like this question personally i like this question means this question is drafted very good means this cover all the points of india 37 expert advice indicate that restoration will be carried out in two distinct phase the first phase requiring expenditure of 2 million to remove the contaminated soil from the area and the second phase commencing three years later from the end of first phase to replant the area with suitable tree and vegetation up to this have you understood there will be two future expenditure one will be after one year and one will be after three year of that end of one year understood the estimated cost of replanting is 3.5 million Mariko uses a cost of capital before taxation 10% so this is pre-tax discount rate we want pre-tax or after tax we want pre-tax only thank you very much and the expenditure where incurred will attract tax relief at the company marginal tax rate of 30 percent but what you will do about 30 percent 30 percent they have given tax rate should we consider tax rate for creation of provision provision should be before tax after tax okay this is bakwas point i said now in exam 30 percent will be given i am with you and this chapter we are doing you are relaxed but in exam this 30 percent can be dangerous you said the whenever some information is given we use it now we use it so there is some become wrong correct mariko has not recognized any provision for such cost in the past and today date is 31st march 2002 means this is the current date the first phase of the cleanup will commence in a few months time and will be completed on 31st march 2003 when the first payment of 2 million will be made phase 2 will be paid three year later from the end of first phase calculate amount of provision can you calculate right now don't see the solution you only calculate i just want to see whether you are calculating correct or not you know how to calculate present value so apply 10 percent rate and calculate it i just want whether you are doing correct calculation or not please be bring calculator bring one fresh notebook to a CA final student, I should not say this point. You bring calculator, bring a press notebook. Correct now. And write whatever I am writing. Write whatever I am writing because that will be useful for revision purpose. Okay? Understood? Then, calculate it, everyone. Are go down. You are we are doing which question? Question number twenty. So we are creating provision on thirty first March two thousand two. So first year end will be thirty first March two thousand three. Then four. Then five. Then six. 
वट इज द एक्सपेंडिचर फर्स्ट मीन्स टू मिलियन टू मिलियन मीन्स ट्वेंटी लैख ना टू मिलियन मीन्स ट्वेंटी लैख दिस विल बी इंकर्ड इन द ऑन विच डेट ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च टू थाउजेंड थ्री देन दिस इयर नील दिस इयर नील एंड दिस इयर हम थ्री पॉइंट सो इट विल बी थर्टी फाइव लैक एंड नाइन टू फर्स्ट फाइंड अ प्रेजेंट वैल्यू फैक्टर दिस जीरो पॉइंट नाइन जीरो नाइन जीरो पॉइंट एट टू सिक्स जीरो पॉइंट सेवन फाइव वन जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स एट थ्री नाउ कैलकुलेट दिस विल बी द अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोविजन कैन यू गिव मी वट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोविजन फुल यू आर गिविंग फुल टोटल कैन यू गिव मी द टोटल हाउ मच फोर्टी टू लैक एटी फाइव थाउजेंड दिस बिकम द अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोविजन इज वट आई एम सिंग इफ यू आर नॉट रीडिंग द क्वेश्चन केयरफुल इन आ सो दिस यू मे डू मिस्टेक सो रीडिंग ऑफ क्वेश्चन इज मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ क्वेश्चन इज मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट दैन सोल्यूशन नॉर्मली वॉट एपन वी मिस अंडरस्टूड द फैक्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन एंड देर फॉर वी आर नॉट एबल टू राइट करेक्ट एंसर गॉट दिस पॉइंट येस सर फोर्टी टू लैख एट थाउजेंड फोर्टी टू लैख एट थाउजेंड इज करेक्ट ओके सर वट इज द एंसर गिवन सेम एंसर इज गिवन चलेगा आई एम जस्ट गिविंग सम क्वेश्चन डू इट बाई रोन ट्वेंटी वन देर आर सम क्वेश्चन विच आई विल हाईलाइट दैट इज मस्ट डू बट इन टायर्स क्वेश्चन इट वी डन बाई यू ओनली हाँ करेक्ट बट फर्स्ट डू दिस मच ओके बिकॉज इन दिस क्वेश्चन यू मे हैव सम डाउट द डाउट इज कमिंग देन आई विल हेल्प यू इन दैट डाउट चलेगा थर्टी थ्री come to this 34 na this i will do xyz limited offer a 6 month warranty 6 month warranty on its small to medium size equipment which can be put to use by the customer with no installation support okay the warranty comes with the equipment and the customer cannot purchase it separately this equipment is typically sold at a gross margin of 40% so this equipment is sold at a gross margin of gross profit of 40% xyz limited has made a provision of rupees 30000 during the year ended 31st march 2002 which is approximately 1% of gross margin on the sale of this equipment means 30000 represents 1% of gross margin so it means you can calculate gross margin correct Based on the past experience, it is expected that one person of equipment sold have been returned as faulty within the warranty period. मतलब well, one person of equipment sold will be returned faulty. Faulty equipment returned to X Y Z Limited during the warranty period are scrapped, and the sale value is fully refunded to the customer. So whatever equipment is returned, that will be scrapped. Means nothing is realizable from that, and the entire amount is refunded to the customer assuming that sales occurred evenly during the year evenly means monthly sales are equal how should xyz limited evaluate whether any additional warranty provision required on the equipment sold in the past in the past as at 31st march 2002 so what they are saying they have created a provision of 30000 should we create any additional provision Had the warranty period been two year instead of six month, what additional criteria would be also considered? This is the entire question. First, we'll do case number one. This is the case number two. There are two point there was. So can I say thirty thousand is the provision and one person of gross margin. So we can find a gross margin. So you can see what they have done. Can you give me what is the one thirty thousand divided by One person, how much? Thirty lakh. So this thirty lakh represents forty percent of the total sales. 
तो डिवाइड बाय फोर्टी परसेंट हाउ मच तो सेवेंटी फाइव लैख इज अ टोटल सेल्स ऑफ द ईयर यू कैन सी दे हैव गिवन टोटल सेल्स वी वर सेवेंटी फाइव लैख बिकॉज वारंटी इज फॉर सिक्स मंथ टू विल ओनली कंसिडर लास्ट सिक्स मंथ बिकॉज फर्स्ट सिक्स मंथ तो वारंटी एक्सपायर्ड तो ओनली लास्ट सिक्स मंथ वी शुड कंसिडर तो लास्ट सिक्स मंथ मीन सिक्स बाय टूअर्थ दिस बिकम थर्टी सेवन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड एंड दे आर सिंग वन पर्सन ऑफ टोटल सेल्स कैन बी रिटर्न तो वन पर्सन ऑफ दिस इज वाट थर्टी सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड मीन्स दिस अमाउंट विल बी रिफंडेड टू कस्टमर बट दे हैव क्रिएटेड प्रोविजन ऑफ हाउ मच थर्टी थाउजेंड इट मीन्स एडिशनल प्रोविजन रिक्वायर्ड हाउ मच सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड बिकॉज क्या इट इज सिक्स मंथ टाइम वैल्यू मनी इज नॉट मेटर यर दे हैव इट विल बी अ डिस्काउंटेड अमाउंट सॉरी अनडिस्काउंटेड अमाउंट दिस पॉइंट है the so second point what they have say if the it is two year then what will take the so two year token is will take entire sales of that year so will take entire sales 75 lakh so 75 lakh one person 75000 so 75000 minus 30000 45000 and can is we should also consider discounted amount but discounting rate is not given they will ignore it correct now but they have given in this if you remember you see the solution Since the outstanding period of warranty is six months, no discounting is required. However, if a longer longer warranty period is to be given, the entity will have to take into account the effect of time value money. The amount of provision shall be the present value of the expenditure expected to be required to settle the warranty obligation. Understood? Correct. Good question only. If sometimes these type of questions are those questions. This is one question which is newly insert, inserted. First, you read. I will not read. Newly inserted question. You can see, RTP November 2020. Newly inserted. Always newly inserted question are very important from exam point of view. Correct. So first, you read. It is a very good question given. Interesting question. Write on MRQ. MRQ means what? Must revise before exam. Correct. Must revise question before exam. Understood. But does this question first you do by own? Let's see whether you are able to understand or not. And if you are able to understand, means you have understood this chapter. Am I right or not? So I will not do. I will discuss this point tomorrow, next class. But first you do by own. Correct? So this question is homework from my point of view. All whatever I have given, all questions are homework. Balance question whenever you have time, do it. So whatever question I have said, that is must do. That is must do. Shall I go? So can we start a new chapter, or we'll take a break? After break, we'll start. So we'll take ten minute break.
ना कैन वी स्टार्ट वन सेकेंड एवरी वन चलो तो इन डे थर्टी सेवन कंप्लीटेड तो टूडे यूनिट टू कंप्लीट ऑल द क्वेश्चन टूडे ओनली हाँ तो वन क्वेश्चन माइट टेक फाइव टू सिक्स मिनट ओके आई थिंक अराउंड थर्टी क्वेश्चन विल बी देयर तो यू विल बी एबल टू कंप्लीट इन वर्ड वन आवर मैक्सिमम वन एंड हाफ आवर करेक्ट ना अभी राइट नाउ वाट विल डू जस्ट रीड क्वेश्चन फ्रेम यू एंसर इन यूर माइंड एंड देन रीड सोल्यूशन करेक्ट डोंट वेस्ट मच टाइम ऑन एनालाइजिंग द क्वेश्चन करेक्ट ना रीड द क्वेश्चन फ्रेम सोल्यूशन की वेदर प्रोविजन विल बी क्रिएटेड और नॉट क्रिएटेड और वट विद अमाउंट दैट यू जस्ट डू इन कैलकुलेटर रीड द सोल्यूशन अभी डोंट दे इज नो नीड टू प्रैक्टिस मच वंस यू आर कॉन्फिडेंट अबाउट द चैप्टर दैन प्रैक्टिस विल स्टार्ट so right now in one hour or one and a half hour whatever you are doing try to complete all the questions so that you will have a confident that yes we have understood all the questions these are the types of questions which can be asked in exam got this point yes sir now next chapter whatever we are going to start is event after reporting date means in day as 10 means corresponding as we what as 4 as 4 AS4 was contingencies and event occurring after balance date. However, I think contingencies after introduction of AS29 was covered under AS29. So AS4 was more or less related to what event occurring after balance date only. Correct. So this chapter one second is similar to what AS4. AS4, I hope nothing to discuss much. What is the meaning of event occurring? Yeah, event after reporting date. So all events which are occurring after reporting date are not covered in this chapter. So in this chapter we cover only those events which occur after reporting date, but before approval of financial statement. So you can see this is the reporting date and the date of approval of financial statement. So we are only concerned about these events. We are only concerned about these events. Got this point? Now, when I say date of approval, date of approval. So, which is this date? Which which date will be considered date of approval? Which date will be considered as the date of approval? When when management approve it? When management approve it? Now, if you know Companies Act. So can you say as per Companies Act, first directors meeting will be held, and the directors meeting it will be approved by the directors, and then it will be presented to shareholders for their approval, and it will be presented to shareholders in AGM, in AGM. So let us assume suppose this is the directors meeting, and this is the AGM. So in AGM it will be approved by shareholders. In AGM, it requires approval from shareholders. Now, which date is relevant? Approval date of shareholders, ki approval date of directors. Approval date of shareholders, ki approval date of directors. Directors, shareholders. No, shareholder date approval that is not relevant. Correct. Chalo, ठीक है. Because you have done AS4, so you know this fact. So I will not discuss much on this. But the point is that why? Why this date is considered? Why not this date is considered? This can be one point of discussion, na? Whatever you are saying, that is correct. Date of approval means what? Date of approval by whom? Approval by whom? Directors. You are hundred percent correct. But one doubt will come. So why not approval of shareholders? Why only approval of directors? Why this chapter only consider the date of approval by director? Why not the date of approval by shareholders? This can be one doubt, na? Huh? Younger dead what? What? This is not the reason. This is not the reason. He is saying longer period. We want to consider lesser transaction. That's not right. Bata. Have you understood the point? The point that answer is what? As per the Companies Act, once it is approved by the shareholders, once it is approved by the shareholders, it cannot be amended. The financial statement cannot be amended. Means can I say 
once it is approved by the shareholders i said sorry once it is approved by the director it cannot be amended the financial statement cannot be amended means can you say after this this financial statement we cannot change means adjustment we can do only for this event however there may be some event which might be relevant for this period which occurred during this period but then also once the financial statement is approved by the directors it cannot be amended it cannot be amended sometime what happen sometime what happen as per aoa etc some special power is given to some of the owner of the company that they can reopen the books of account they can reopen the books of account reopening of books of account means what means even though it is approved by the directors it can be reopened by say any person whoever that power whoever that power has been given so suppose any financial statement can be reopened at this point of time it means can i say we need to prepare we need to prepare what financial statement after reverification it means it can be amended it can be amended in that case the date of approval will be this date when it is approved by that particular person means you need to find out who is approving and after that approval financial statement cannot be amended that become date of approval means in normal circumstances is the date when it is approved by the management management means directors understood is fine correct so you have understood ki are those event which occur between reporting date and the date when financial statement are approved for issue so when i am saying are approved so it has been given a clarification it is the approval of board of directors board of directors understood is fine have you understood is fine correct now this event can be either favorable event or it can be unfavorable also favorable means what giving rise to income unfavorable means what giving rise to expense but one doubt will come just try to understand correct so this is the reporting date this is the reporting date understood is fine now in bachpan we have done one point that any transaction related to this period should be only recorded means any transaction which occur after reporting date should be recorded after reporting date means in next financial year this only in bachpan we have done na am i right or not ki any transaction which is record any transaction which occur in this financial year should be recorded in this financial year any transaction event which occur after reporting date should be recorded in next financial year so the doubt will not come ki any event which occur after reporting date should be considered in this financial year bolo should be considered in this financial year yes or no na abhi to i have not done adjusting even non adjusting even so that to you know but if i am teaching for the first time you don't know that point na just try to understand my question is what i am not discussing about adjusting even non adjusting even we are discussing about this financial year means we are discussing about this financial statement so my question to you are any event which occur after reporting date should be recorded in this financial year that is a question first of all try to understand some question this question they will ask in interview then say so then so they will not ask second question na you will think this much they will ask second question are bol na re you know but you need to convince other na you know everything but i am not able to convince you it means you your knowledge can't be applied you are a knowledgeable person but application of that knowledge is more important only knowledge will not do anything you should apply that knowledge somewhere na are you getting what i am saying one second what is my question try to understand what i am saying ki right now we are doing this chapter for this financial year we are doing this chapter for this financial year the question is that any event which occur after reporting date should be considered in this financial year this is the question if you are saying yes then why if you are saying no then why to some extent what some extent chalo acha what was the adjusting event 
Now I am coming to your your solution. What is the adjusting event? One one by one by one. Don't one by one. It means what adjusting event says. Adjusting event are those event which relate to the condition existing on the balance sheet date. It means. We are not recording this transaction or event which occur after balance sheet date. We are just thinking about a condition which is existing on balance sheet date. Condition which is existing on balance sheet date means if it relate to the condition existing on the balance sheet date, it means can I say it relate to this period only? Are you able to understand? Correct. So we are discussing about this condition. We are not discussing about this event. So any event which relate to the condition existing of the, existing on the balance sheet date might give some confirmation about that condition. Might give some confirmation about the condition. So what I will do now with some examples, I will just try to explain ki what is the objective of this chapter. What is the objective of this chapter? Correct? Understood? I hope meaning to you have understood event occurring after balance sheet date. The event occurring after reporting date are those events which can be either favorable or unfavorable and which occur after reporting date and the date when the financial statement are approved for issue. Some clarification has been given on the date of approval. In any case, the date of approval will be the approval given by the management. Some approval, but some clarification. If financial statement are to be approved by the shareholders, after financial statement are approval, Approved by board of directors. So clarification is what? Financial statement I approve for issue on the date of approval by board of directors. This clarification has been given. If financial statement are to be issued to supervisory board of non-executive directors for approval after management approve financial statement. Sometime what happens? We take loan from bank. So bank will appoint some of their officer as non-executive director of that company. In any case, in case of fraud, they will inform to the bank. So once it is approved by the board of director, it is given to the supervisory board consisting of non-executive director for further approval. Whether that is relevant for this chapter, that is not relevant for this chapter. Date of approval will be the date of approval by whom? Board of director. Correct. Then point number C. If financial statement are approved by board of director. After public announcement of profit or other financial information, what they want to say, let me inform. This point may be important from exam point of view. You suppose these are the four quarter of a financial year, and we are preparing quarter report: quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Correct. Right. Suppose this quarter one report is approved at this date. This quarter two report will be approved on this date. This quarter three report will be approved on this date. This quarter four report, let us assume, it will be approved on this date. Correct. And board of directors meeting will be held at this point of time for the approval of annual financial statement. For the approval of annual financial statement. Understood. Means, can I say, if this quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four information is already published. It means profit information is already given to whom? To the user of financial statement. Are you getting what I am saying? Quarter 1, quarter 2, quarter 3, quarter 4 reports are already approved means it is published. If it is published means can you say the public know the profit information of what? This company. Now on this date we already know the profit. Can we change this profit because of this event? Yes, we can change means for this this is not at all relevant quarterly report and annual report are two different reports annual financial statement is not dependent on quarterly statement means the profit whatever we are disclosing quarter report may be different from annual financial statement and therefore date of approval will be this date not this date understood so this is clarification means what i am saying all the clarification has been given by india state he in this case also financial statement i approve for issue on the date of approval by board of directors understood correct now you all know types of event events are of two type adjusting event non-adjusting event no much discussion required 
कि विच प्रोवाइड एविडेंस ऑफ द कंडीशन एग्जिस्टिंग ऑन रिपोर्टिंग डेट तो एडजस्टिंग इवेंट आर दोज इवेंट विच प्रोवाइड एविडेंस ऑफ द कंडीशन एग्जिस्टिंग ऑन बैलेंस डेट और रिपोर्टिंग डेट अंडरस्टूड इस माइंड ठीक है मीन्स नॉन एडजस्टिंग इवेंट आर दोज इवेंट विच रिलेट टू द कंडीशन विच अराइजेस आफ्टर रिपोर्टिंग डेट मीन्स If any event relate to the condition arising after reporting date, that is not relevant for last financial year, and therefore should not be adjusted. Therefore, should not be adjusted. So, which relate to the condition arising after reporting date are non-adjusting event, and therefore no adjustment required. Can you see in this case adjustment required to the financial statement? When I am saying adjusted to financial statement means can you see we need to adjust asset or liability. and income or expense income or expense so adjusted to financial statement means adjust your asset or liability or income and expense correct now what india stands is that for non adjusting even no adjustment required but if the amount is material then a disclosure is required in notes to account so disclosure of such event is required in financial event that is notes to account if amount is Material. However, AS four used to say disclosure is required in the report of approving authority. This become one difference. This become one difference. Understood? चलेगा. Now, I will take some example to understand whether you have understood this chapter in CA inter or not. Okay. So this example will help you to improve the concept of this chapter. Correct. If you want to write, write. If you don't want to write, then also write. Correct. All the examples. Means I will take very basic example which you have taken where in your C A inter. I will start with basic example and slowly, slowly I will improve the example. Chalega. Example number one. For as a fast, I will write reporting date. Date of approval, so you should write down with me. Okay. The reporting date there was a debtor. If you remember in C A inter, the example they started with debtor only, and sometimes we think that this chapter is only for debtor. Am I right or not? The first example given by your teacher was debtor only. You remember? Debtor only, na? Every teacher will give that only. Therefore, I am also giving this. But I will try to inform you that this chapter is not only for debtor. Let us assume there is one debtor, and the amount outstanding is ten lakh. Amount outstanding is ten lakh. And what happened after reporting it before approval of financial statement? So I will not say bar bar. It is understood point. Means any event which occur after this is not relevant for this chapter, na? is not relevant for this chapter so we are not discussing about that we are discussing about only this event we are discussing about this event dom is what date of approval rd is what this to you have understood now you need to understand my emotions otherwise you will also get emotions i will also get emotions theek hai chalo so what happened the fire occurred in premises of debtor and he become insolvent the debtor become insolvent understand what i am saying for the adjusting non adjusting adjusting non adjusting how many are saying non adjusting so it means doubt is there ha huh? you have doubt someone is saying adjusting Someone is saying non-adjusting. This doubt is there. First example of C A inter doubt आ गया. Understood? You pass C A inter exam without concept. Am I right or not? If the doubt is coming, means doubtful, na? So it is a non-adjusting event. It is a non-adjusting event. बताओ. Whether there was any condition of non-payment on reporting date, no condition. Means this condition relate to the this event relate to the condition arising after reporting date, na? 
means this debtor become bad debtor if he was a bad debtor on reporting date ki after reporting date after reporting date there was no adjusting even what is adjusting yahan par nothing so there was no condition on reporting date and therefore it is a non adjusting event chalega example number 2 I am not writing reason, ha? Huh? Reason, so you can write down in your own words. One second reporting date, date of approval. One second there was the debtor. Amount outstanding was ten lakh. And what happened? Credit period of Two month, which was given to him, has been expired. Has been expired. It means can I say he become a doubtful debtor? He become a doubtful debtor? Yes or no? Now he become a doubtful debtor. He credit period was allowed two month. He need to pay the amount within two month, but that has been expired. On or before reporting date, so he become doubtful debtor. Now what happened? Because he was a doubtful debtor, so already we created an allowance. We are not writing provision, correct? Now provision is a wrong term. Already I have said, we can't say provision for doubtful debt. We will say allowance for bad and doubtful debt. Already we created two lakh allowance as per the best estimate, but this allowance is created as per which indias? As per India's 109 coming soon. Till now we have not discussed India's 109, huh? But we know provision for doubtful debt. But when say now how to create as per India's 109 that will discuss. How to measure this amount that will discuss. Now nah? are we able to understand? Yes, sir. So already 8 lakh is appearing in the balance sheet. Now what happened? On reporting date, whatever balance sheet we prepare, that is known as draft balance sheet. that is known as draft financial statement understood so this is known as draft financial statement which is not yet finalized finalization will be after audit and after approval of what financial statement by board of director correct understood now what happened this debtor now declared as what now declared as insolvent बताओ एडजस्टिंग नॉन एडजस्टिंग एडजस्टिंग नॉन एडजस्टिंग एडजस्टिंग सुपर इजी नॉ इट बिकम एडजस्टिंग इवेंट वाई एडजस्टिंग इवेंट टू आई रिलेट टू द कंडीशन एडजस्टिंग ऑन बैलेंस इज एट तो ना द क्वेश्चन इज दैट वट एडजस्टमेंट इज रिक्वायर्ड ऑन रिपोर्टिंग डेट वट विल बी द एडजस्टमेंट एंट्री ऑन रिपोर्टिंग डेट remaining 8 lakh should be means that there are two point let's see what you are saying should we increase the allowance by 8 lakh or we should recognize a bad debt of rupees 10 lakh just try to understand when i say bad debt then our general entry is bad debt to debtor we should reduce the amount of debtor only but when you create allowance we don't reduce the amount of debtor debtor will be gross amount allowance will be created and that will be shown as a net amount in the balance sheet there are two different point bad debt means reduce directly from debtor yes or no correct So which one is correct? Increase allowance by eight lakh. See, we should recognize now bad debt only because when I am saying bad debt, so debtor will remove. Means now debtor will not come in the balance sheet. When I am saying bad debt, so ten lakh minus ten lakh, now debtor will not come in the balance sheet. But when I am saying allowance, then we say debtor how much? Ten lakh less allowance how much? Ten lakh. Net impact will remain same, but presentation different, na? Are you bona re? Correct. So which one is correct? First one is correct. Second one is correct. How many are saying first one? 
So first one is correct. This is not correct. That is it. Are you able to understand? However, this is not at all important from exam point of view. They will never ask. But as a CA, you should know this fact or not. Just try to understand what is the objective of this chapter. Now let us come to the objective. I said now with example, I will inform you the objective of this chapter. Now let us come to the objective of this chapter. Objective is what? Whatever information you are providing to the user, that should be the best information, true and fair information. True and fair information or not? Are you saying? Now, you have a data of 10 lakh and how much allowance we have estimated? 2 lakh. But before approval of financial statement, it was understood that 2 lakh is not 2 lakh, 2 lakh is 10 lakh. Means you need to now estimate allowance at 2 lakh to 10 lakh. Before approval of financial statement, you have understood that your estimation was not correct. You have estimated 2 lakh, but actually it should be 10 lakh, and that has been confirmed with that evidence. That is confirmed with that event that even provide evidence of the condition existing on the reporting date. So what? We should now estimate 2 lakh to 10 lakh. 10 lakh because that has been confirmed before approval of financial statement. So what this chapter is saying that you need to you need to measure at a correct amount. And if you are getting some evidence of that measurement before approval of financial statement, you should change the measurement. But can I say it become an actual loss in this period or next financial year? It become an actual loss of this financial year or next financial year? Actual loss happen in next financial year. So actual loss you record in next financial year only. Means in Bachpan say we have done one order, we follow one order that is known as chronological order. Can you say we can't change that thing? Bad debt happen in which year? Next financial year, actual loss occurred in which year? Next financial year, there were bad debt jana entry will be done in next financial year, but estimation whatever you are doing, that should be correct estimate if the amount, if the confirmation has been received before approval of financial statement. So this is the objective of this chapter. Objective of this chapter is to what? Record all assets and liability at best estimation and if you are getting any confirmation of that estimation before approval of financial statement adjust it adjust it understood have a sir why not in this then you are getting before approval of financial statement 10 lakh is not 10 lakh 10 lakh is what zero now so you should create a provision but we have we can't change our rule this is not related to condition existing on balance sheet the condition and i just after reporting date it is not relevant for this financial year. It is not relevant for this financial year. But this is relevant for this financial year because already you have created an allowance. So that allowance should be at correct estimation. Understood now. Objective, I hope you have understood. Now with this objective, now all the answer will be based on it with this objective. Don't think about adjusting, non-adjusting. Apply your common sense now. Apply your common sense. One more example. One second data. Suppose 10 lakh and already you have created an allowance of bad and doubtful debt 2 lakh. Quite possible. This is in a draft financial statement. Now what happened? You receive entire amount from the data before approval of financial statement quite possible means what happened before reporting that this person went to Pakistan now he will do not return now so you have concluded that now the amount can't be recovered but he was sunny devil he came back Everyone can't come back, na? And so you have seen that movie Gadar. So only Sunny Deol can come. No one can come back from Pakistan. Sir, I am just kidding. So what happened? He, that person now came and you received the entire amount from that data. But the adjusting, non-adjusting. Adjusting, non-adjusting. 
एडजस्टिंग ना हंड्रेड परसेंट करेक्ट इट मीन नाउ यू आर थिंकिंग फ्रॉम ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस चैप्टर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस चैप्टर इज वर्ड कि नाउ द अलाउंस वॉज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड ओनली बिकॉज कैन इज यू हैव रिसीव द इंटायर अमाउंट इट मीन्स यू वॉज नॉट ए डाउटफुल डेटर इफ यू वॉज नॉट ए डाउटफुल डेटर देन वाई यू आर क्रिएटिंग अलाउंस फॉर डेट बैड एंड डाउटफुल डेट सो इट मीन्स वाट का वट विल डू विल रिवर्स वाट रिवर्स इंटायर अलाउंस फॉर बैड एंड डाउटफुल डेट अंडरस्टूड करेक्ट एग्जाम्पल नंबर फोर एग्जाम्पल नंबर फोर डेटर तो यू हैव अंडरस्टूड डेट एस कम टू सम अदर पॉइंट सपोज देर वॉज एन इन्वेंट्री उस कॉस्ट प्राइस वॉज हंड्रेड एन एन आर बी वॉज वन ट्वेंटी अब फायर ऑकर्ड इन्वेंट्री डैमेज ना इन्वेंट्री डैमेज ना डैमेज एंड नाउ एन आर बी ऑफ दिस इन्वेंट्री इज सिक्सटी बताओ एडजस्टिंग नॉन एडजस्टिंग एडजस्टिंग नॉन एडजस्टिंग नॉन एडजस्टिंग ना एवरी वन सिंग नॉन एडजस्टिंग एनी वन सिंग एडजस्टिंग नॉन एडजस्टिंग बिकॉज रिलेट टू द कंडीशन आफ्टर बैलेंस इट देर फोर नो एडजस्टमेंट रिक्वायर्ड देर फोर नो एडजस्टमेंट रिक्वायर्ड कैन बी प्रोसिड एग्जाम्पल नंबर फाइव कैन यू प्रोसीड रिपोर्टिंग डेट डेट ऑफ अप्रूवल इन्वेंट्री कॉस्ट प्राइस इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड एंड एन आर बी इज इक्वल टू एटी अंडरस्टूड तो वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ एन आर बी डोंट गिव द फुल फॉर्म हा वट इज एन आर बी मीन वट इज नेट रियलाइजेबल वैल्यू हा मीन्स इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड नेक्स्ट चैप्टर इज आई थिंक आई विल टेक आई द इंडिया टू और इंडिया सिक्सटीन नेक्स्ट चैप्टर एक्सपेक्टेड सेलिंग प्राइस माइनस एक्सपेक्टेड सेलिंग एक्सपेंस एक्सपेक्टेड सेलिंग एक्सपेंस अंडरस्टूड मीन्स एन आर बी इज ऑल्सो एन एस्टिमेशन एन आर बी इज ऑल्सो एन एस्टिमेशन करेक्ट नाउ बिफोर अप्रूवल ऑफ फाइनेंस स्टेटमेंट द इन्वेंट्री वॉज एक्चुअली सोल्ड एट रुपीज सिक्सटी मतलब एडजस्टिंग नॉन एडजस्टिंग एडजस्टिंग नॉन एडजस्टिंग एडजस्टिंग नॉन एडजस्टिंग हा हाउ मनी आर सेंग एडजस्टिंग मीन्स टिल नाउ नॉट अंडरस्टेड मीन्स यू आर इन सी एंटर टिल नाउ करेक्ट ना टिल नाउ यू आर इन सी एंटर आई एम ऑलरेडी गिवन द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस चैप्टर यू आर नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड माई इमोशंस करेक्ट ना फर्स्ट थिंग can you say nrb means one estimation what estimation we have done that it can be sold at rupees 80 now before approval of finances table it was actually sold at rupees 60 means it is come from that nrb is 80 or 60 60 na this was an estimation that it can be sold at what 80 but actually sold at what 60 it means it was it is now confirm that whatever amount you have estimated that was not correct to so correct it before approval of financial statement that event occur that event occur na just try to understand right now you are thinking 80 is very small amount but if i say 80 crore then profit will be affected or not profit will be affected entire profit or loss will be affected so think about that magnitude can be high also 
are you able to understand so can you see this is an estimation we have estimated that it is 80 now it is confirmed with the actual sale that it is not 80 it is 60 it is an adjusting event only it is an adjusting event now it is an adjusting event correct have you understood this point example number six inventory cost price is equal to 100 are you getting what i'm saying now what happened he after reporting date the demand decreases why because technology changes etc quite possible due to change in technology correct understood and because of that reason nrb is now 60 but adjusting non adjusting adjusting non adjusting non adjusting adjusting everyone saying non adjusting Chalo, let us understand my question to you all you just think from business point of view suppose you are a business you are doing this business and this is what a uh, item suppose mobile or any item related to technology my question to you on reporting date whether you are not knowing about technology changes whether technology will, technology will change immediately or that information you will have just try to understand you are the you are the business you are doing business so you, whether you don't know about the information of changes in technology on reporting date or whether it will be sudden sudden changes will happen just try to understand technology will change so that we know if we are a dealer of mobile we know that new mobile new brand is going to come so let us clear the stock let us clear the stock now normally can i say discount will be offered why discounts are offered because they know that fresh arrival is going to come so let us clear the stock so that information will be available with the entity or not so that information that condition was prevailing on the reporting date or not yes are you able to understand what I am saying? So, when I am saying demand decreases, changes in technology, it does not mean it happens sudden that information will be available with the entity on 31st March also. So, whenever inventory becomes obsolete, it does not mean it is, an, it is a non-adjusting event. It was an adjusting event only because the condition was prevailing on what? 31st March. I hope you are understanding. Are you able to understand? This is an exam question. It is an exam question where they have given an example of car. If they have a car and then due to obsolescence, etc. The NRV of the car become worth 60. Whether it is an adjusting or non-adjusting. Most of the students will say non-adjusting. If you think only about the. Only about what? The chapter. If you don't think about the concept of this chapter. Then everyone will give wrong. Can you see this condition? this condition will prevail on what reporting date and therefore it is a what adjusting event and therefore it is a adjusting event understood this point this is important from exam point of view have you understood any doubt any doubt about this Bolo. No doubt. Can you proceed? Example number 
7. Suppose on reporting date, there is a machinery whose carrying amount is 10 lakh. And it was sold at rupees 8 lakh. But adjusting, non adjusting. Adjusting, non adjusting. Non adjusting. Here the non adjusting, no? Let a non adjusting. Example number eight. There was one proposal to sell machinery whose carrying amount is ten lakh before reporting that one proposal to sell and it was actually sold at rupees 8 lakh but adjusting non adjusting adjusting non adjusting everyone is not saying that why I need wait adjusting non adjusting non adjusting Pakka non adjusting. Non adjusting because case it is a, only a proposal. It is only a proposal. Na? It is only a proposal. Correct? However, just write down. Write down. In days 105 might be attracted. Might be applicable. I do I am not discussing about India's 105. Once India's 105 will come, this point automatically you will understand. So ignoring India's 105, it is a non-adjusting. So we will discuss some points regarding adjusting, non-adjusting in India's 105 also. Correct? So this point once again I will take in India's 105 chapter. Chalega? Yes sir. Example number 9. Suppose sale of machinery agreement done, agreement already done, understood? Carrying amount 10 lakh, sale price 8 lakh. Got this point? One minute, one doubt came. Example number six. Anyways, during inventory valuation, they would have calculated NRV and cost. No, sir. So, if there is an additional information about that NRV before the date of approval, then it is an adjusting event. No, no, just try to understand. I am just creating one question from exam point of view. I am just creating one question. If this question they have given, it is an adjusting or non adjusting that I am asking. And it is quite possible because till now technology has not changed. So it might have an NRV is 120 they have estimated because they have an information about changes in technology. Because, but actual technology change might take some time. So they have estimated 120 and now due to change in technology it becomes 60 quite possible now then also it is an adjusting event that I just want to inform you no doubt over understood correct so doubt came therefore I have discussed example number 9 example number 9 have you understood what I have said sale of machinery agreement done carrying amount 10 lakh sale price 8 lakh this was one of the favorite question of CA inter but from my point of view, whatever, 
whatever answer was given in ca inter suggested solution that was not correct but i also teach as per ic solution only ha huh? so there i don't discuss that much there i say adjusting zindabad correct but now to you are ca final student so i need to give you the correct information so for this question come this is the reporting date this is the date of approval and they say that registration completed registration completed before approval of financial statement but uh, adjusting non adjusting adjusting but actually this is not a question of india s10 actually it is not a question of india s10 normally in ca inter they used to ask this question as per as4 but i will say in this as4 is not applicable only just try to understand when a sale has been done so it is will be as per india 16 as per india 16 means as 10 as per india 16 means accounting standard 10 now what as india 16 says that if control transferred if control transfer then we should de recognize it de recognize it na and if control not transferred if control not transferred then do not de recognize it are you able to understand what i am saying have you understood this point de recognize means pass sale journal entry do not de recognize it means do not pass sale journal entry understood this point means can this registration is only a legal formality legal formality i hope if you have done substance of a form what is the meaning of substance of a form what is the meaning of substance of a form what is the meaning of substance of a form do you know hmm bolo i'm asking something substance of a form means what while doing accounting treatment just see the substance of the transaction not a legal document so registration completed or not completed it is only a legal formality that should not be considered to identify the control control can be transferred without and registration has been completed even though registration has not been completed control can be transferred so what india 16 says that once control transferred it will be de recognized even though registration has not been completed are you getting and if control is not transferred then it will never be de recognized it will never be de recognized means it is not a question of india 10 it is a question about india 16 i will say are you able to understand so if in your exam the same questions come refer india 16 and just write down this registration is a mere formality therefore that should not be considered to recognize the sale journal entry understood have you understood ha if suppose they have said give answer as per india 10 only then i don't adjusting even but i will say even though registration is not completed it will be adjusted if the control is control has been transferred understood correct have you understood this point so, example number 10 i think all this example is giving better picture of this chapter correct reporting date date of approval suppose on reporting date there was some legal case pending and as per the best estimate given by the lawyer we have created a provision of rupees 10 lakh we have created a provision of rupees 10 lakh understood now before approval of financial statement case decided are you getting what i am saying case decided either it can be in favor of company or it can be in against the company 
against the company na payable means now no compensation nil amount against the company the amount can be either higher or lower than 10 lakh suppose it is 12 lakh bata adjusting non adjusting in both cases adjusting non adjusting adjusting na means if it is favorable then you need to reverse the amount of provision if it is against then increase the amount of provision understood so in both cases it is adjusting have you understood and now with this example you will understand that point it is supported by additional evidence in india 37 India's 37. We have done one point now. I said we'll discuss where in India's 10. This point. This point. Point number B. Estimation are determined by management judgment. It need to be supported by any additional evidence provided by event occurring after reporting date. The same example I have taken. Means whatever estimation you have done, that should be based on. any additional evidence provided by the event occurring after reporting date understood have you understood example number 10 also you understood example number 11 correct sorry i'm asking a good question now the last example of final level let's see how you are reacting if this you are saying correct means you have understood the chapter now what actually happened ki before the reporting date we have decided to close down a factory this is a question related to what question related to what close down a factory means question related to restructuring today only we have done restructuring now before reporting date management has made a detailed plan before reporting date a detailed plan was made but announcement was done before approval of financial statement announcement of plan was made after reporting date but before approval of financial statement should we create provision for restructuring on reporting date means adjusting or non adjusting adjusting non adjusting everything non adjusting but announcement was made before approval of financial statement both the condition very good excellent means you have understood non adjusting only because both the condition need to be satisfied on which date on reporting date it means there is no constructive obligation on reporting date means it relate to the condition arising after balance sheet date so of course will create provision but for the next financial year not in this financial year understood so it relate to the condition arising after balance sheet date understood the importance of this chapter it is a very important chapter for preparation of financial statement entire financial statement is based on additional evidence provided by additional evidence provided by the event occurring after balance sheet date can you see if you remember bachpan bachpan mein trial balance used to be given with some adjustment that adjustment is nothing but this chapter all adjustment is nothing but this chapter only na means we know this chapter from bachpan only but we are learning the concept right now understanding the logic behind this right now already we have done na adjustment 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 they used to give and we used to adjust because all we are adjusting even chalo this much you understood i think done let me ask you one question not important from exam point of view but this type of actually this type of situation you may find in your office it is quite possible you may have came across also let's see what you 
what is your answer let's see example number 12 last question just try to understand two question i will create one is for receive object and one is of issue object theek hai na first suppose there is a debtor this type of question to i think in ca enter they have asked also in ca enter exam debtor and suppose amount to be receive what 10 lakh and after reporting date before approval of financial statement what happen you receive a check dated dated on or before 31st march means the date of check is 31st march or before 31st march correct but check was received after check was received after what reporting date understood this point have you understood this point means the check date is what either 31st march or before 31st march but you received that check after 31st march and before approval of financial statement can you pass receive jana entry on 31st march understood means adjusting if you are saying adjusting means you want to pass jana entry if you are saying non adjusting means it will not be passed on reporting date it will be passed in the next financial year bata when you record this jana entry on this date ki in the next financial year adjusting non adjusting how many are saying adjusting how many are saying non adjusting to doubt still doubt under the doubt is still there this in exam so you will waste your time na you think you will think so you will waste 5 to 10 minute bata think logically na logically bata how many are saying non adjusting so those who are saying non adjusting can you explain Why non adjusting? कि मजा आ रहा है हेड एंड टेल वाई इट इज नॉन एडजस्टिंग बिकॉज नॉन एडजस्टिंग इज करेक्ट दिस इज नॉट एन एक्सप्लेनेशन हाँ वाह रे वाह वेदर आई विल बी कन्विंस विद दिस एक्सप्लेनेशन हाँ टू कन्विंस वी आई ऑलरेडी से यू विल गेट मार्क्स फॉर बेस्ट एंसर नॉट फॉर करेक्ट एंसर योर एंसर इज करेक्ट बट आई एम नॉट कन्विंस आई विल गिव जीरो if i am checking your paper because i am here to select what best out of you they only will become see you think about your best tensor okay best tensor bol now maza nahi aaya one second no 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 this chapter is not not always for estimation ha huh? Don't think about that. Always, it will be based on estimation. Huh? No, no, no. I'll give you another example. Chalo, ठीक है. I'll give you another example. Similar type of question, but as different case study. Reporting date, date of approval. Correct now. Same data. Ten lakh. Now what happened? Check dated thirty first March or before was received was received by agent. Collecting agent before thirty first March 
but handed over to company ya yeah, entity after what 31st march have you understood the point check dated 31st march or before 31st march received by an agent collecting agent collecting agent can be employee or it can be bank etc any agent received by agent but it is handed over to company after 31st march but the adjusting non adjusting in this case you are saying adjusting na and in this case you will say what non adjusting this is non adjusting this is adjusting why the reason is what just try to understand this check was collected after 31st march whether it can be used on 31st march whether this check can be deposited on 31st march whether this check can be deposited or endorsed on 31st march it means can i say it is not under the control of the entity if it is not under the control of the entity it is not an asset if it is not an asset the question of recognition will not arise understood but in this case because it is collected by the collecting agent it is under the control of the entity or not it can be endorsed to some other party yes or no it means it is under the control of the entity so see what is what means if you want to convince someone so of course your answer is correct but i will say the best answer should be given mark so you should say this check is not under the control not under the control of entity on 31st march and therefore it will not be an asset for the company and therefore the question of recognition will not arise understood this point but in this case it will be it will be under the control of under the control of entity on 31st march and therefore it become what adjusting event understood this point correct got this point the last example so example number 13 last this is also very basic example this question was asked to one of the my student in interview i don't know whether this type of question will be asked in exam or not interview pucha normally what happen when you will go to interview and you will come to me i'll just write down what are the question they have asked to you if i found interesting question i discuss in what class if i find so this question was interesting only but they have asked the check was issued to a supplier before 31st march understood means already they have done one general entry general entry they have done payable account debit to bank this general entry has been done na payable or creditor account debit to bank but what happened before approval of financial statement check was dishonored means adjusting non adjusting if you are saying adjusting adjusting means you need to reverse the general entry if you are saying non adjusting you will not reverse the general entry in the this financial year you reverse the general entry in next financial year this is the meaning of adjusting non adjusting with the adjusting non adjusting and this type of situation might come with you also quite possible adjusting non adjusting everyone saying non adjusting anyone saying adjusting adjusting how many are saying adjusting only one 
चलो बट वाई इट इज एडजस्टिंग बिकॉज एडजस्टिंग इज करेक्ट देखो इन क्लास ऑलवेज एंसर करेक्ट एंसर इज वॉट माइनोरिटी बोल रहे हैं सुनो बट दिस इज ओनली सेकेंड थर्ड क्लास विथ ट्वेंटी क्लास ना मोस्ट ऑफ यूर एंसर विल बी करेक्ट बिकॉज वॉट हैपन राइट नाउ यू आर एज पर सी ए इंटर हाँ आई एम जस्ट चेंजिंग द प्रोसेस ऑफ लर्निंग इट विल टेक सम टाइम आफ्टर टेन ट्वेंटी क्लास ना वेन एवर आई विल आस्क क्वेश्चन यू मोस्ट ऑफ यू से करेक्ट इट हैपन्स इन माई ऑल बैचेज इट विल हैपन इन दिस बैचेज बट हाँ फर्स्ट टेन डेज बिकॉज यू आर इन सी यू आर इन सी ए इंटर मोड एंसर विल नॉट कम आई विल ट्राई टू चेंज यू विद दैट चेंज यू एंसर विल कम करेक्ट ऑनली बता वाई इट इज एडजस्टिंग बोल अरे तो यू टू नो बट आफ्टर रिपोर्टिंग डेट ना लाए वट इज दिसंसर तो कंडीशन वेदर कंडीशन ऑफ डिजोन वॉज देयर ऑन रिपोर्टिंग डेट हाँ ना वट देखो क्या होता है अभी वट आई एम सिंग इफ यू आर एंसरिंग यू आर एक्सप्लेनिंग Now, because you know the answer, it is not correct. Because now you are trying to explain. Because now you know the answer, it is an adjusting. You are just trying to match it. Yes or no? Am I right or not? Are you able to understand what I am saying? You have understood adjusting. Let us now explain. So it will not give correct explanation. If the correct explanation will not come. You need to understand the scenario. I said, become chartered accountant. Just try to understand if this is the situation. Then, so everyone will do this only because we'll try to we'll try to show liability or we'll try not to show liability. In our balance, if liability is coming, it is good or bad. Bad only. Now, so what I will do? Will you switch it and then will do zoner? It is window dressing. Are you bolna re? Suppose there is a liability of hundred crore. What I will do? Will you switch it? and then we'll say this owner am i right or not and just try to understand even though even though a check was issued and now it this owner can i say it is the responsibility of management to keep minimum balance and if they are not maintaining that balance it means the information was not the information was known to them so it will be dishonored so it is the duty of the management to keep minimum balance to that amount so that a check is not dishonored if they are not maintaining this means there is the intention to make it dishonored it means the information was known on reporting date that this much balance is required and if they are not maintaining that balance so it is what they have mistake na it means it is an adjusting event only and it will be always adjusted it will be always adjusted understood I don't know whether this type of question will be asked in exam or not, but it was asked in interview. Got this point? So interview they will check your what skills. In exam they will check your what knowledge. Knowledge means what whether you know that subject or not. Skills will not be tested in exam. Skills can't be tested in exam. Skills can be tested in interview or in your practical scenario. Understood? Correct. One doubt came. Let me read. It can be a BRS item. Are BRS is something alag dunia. BRS is something alag dunia. I am not teaching you BRS, okay? But in second situation, it is not with the collecting agent on 31st March. No, no. I am saying it is a collecting agent. It was collected, received by agent before 31st March. I have said was received by agent before 31st March, na? So it was collected by collecting agent before thirty first March. You have not understood properly. Chalo, understood now all points. So with this adjusting, non-adjusting, we have understood. Adjusting, non-adjusting, we have understood. Time also over. Correct. Bull four and five. Four and five. You have doubt. Come to four and five. Wait for five minutes, everyone. Four and five. Four.
फोर में फर्स्ट डाउट अबाउट फोर वन बाय वन बट दिस इज रिलेटेड टू कंडीशन विच ऑकर आफ्टर बैलेंस डेट फायर ऑकर आफ्टर बैलेंस डेट तो इट बिकम नॉन एडजस्टिंग इवेंट करेक्ट तो दिस रिलेटेड दिस इज रिलेटेड बट टू द कंडीशन अराइजिंग आफ्टर बैलेंस डेट हियर आई सेड ऑलरेडी इट इज एन आर बी मीन समथिंग हैपन बिफोर वाट इट इंडिकेट समथिंग हैपन बिफोर वाट थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च यस नो दे फोर द एन आर बी इज लेस देन कॉस्ट प्राइस ना इट इंडिकेट एज समथिंग हैपन बिफोर थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च इट मीन कंडीशन वॉज प्रीवेलिंग ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च एंड नाउ इट वॉज एक्चुअली सोल्ड एट सिक्सटी so this give an evidence of correct estimation so now we should estimate 80 or 60 60 and so it relate to the condition existing on balance sheet date now in this last example i said ki on reporting date i have not informed you anything but the question has informed that the market demand decreases after reporting date due to obsolescence etc and the sale price has came down From 120 to 60, adjusting, non-adjusting. They will inform you this much only. You will say adjusting because this information will be available on reporting date about the market changes. About the market changes. I mean, what happened? I am just giving one example of this. You will appreciate. What happened? New scheme came. New schemes came. When the new scheme was announced, now I was having 300 stock of my books. 300 stock of books was there. So, can I say that will be applicable for one more item? Now, 300 books. Quite possible it is not sold. Quite possible it is not sold. What I have done? I have reduced my prices, fifty percent. I have sold entire my books in fifty fifty percent. Why? Because announcement came about what applicability of new scheme in the May twenty four. But for November twenty three, I have reduced the prices of all my books because I want to sell all my books at lower profit margin there was some profit but lower profit margin yes or no businessman i know this position or not i know all the points so i will not i will say no i don't know about this situation this is not correct whatever is happening to your business you all know because i am a businessman i am a businessman na are bolna so if i am dealing with such type of inventory so of course i will be aware about the technology changes on reporting date only on reporting date only therefore this will be an adjusting event therefore it will be a adjusting event understood this point i hope you have understood the chapter is not yet completed there are three special point left in this chapter that will discuss tomorrow correct so there are three special point a b and c this all will discuss tomorrow okay thank you very much we'll meet tomorrow till then bye bye take care enjoy your remaining day bye bye अच्छा दो जो आर लाइव क्लासेस फ्रॉम टुमारो देर बी नो यूट्यूब स्ट्रीमिंग तो प्लीज ज्वाइन द ऐप प्लीज ज्वाइन द लाइव क्लास ऐप ओके एंड इफ यू आर फाइंडिंग एनी प्रॉब्लम इन दैट ऐप कंसल्ट आवर टेक्निकल टीम ऑलरेडी द व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप लिंक हैज बीन गिवन टू यू तो इफ यू आर फाइंडिंग एनी ट्रबल इन इंस्टॉलेशन ऑफ दैट ऐप कॉन्टेक्ट आवर टीम एंड अबाउट यू प्लीज कलेक्ट द बुक्स इन क्लास विदाउट बुक मजा नहीं आता है ओके ओके तो इफ यू हैव नॉट रिसीव बुक कलेक्ट द बुक्स ओके चलो थैंक यू वेरी मच